Hi everyone. In continuing our discussion on asses and bases in Unit 4, I want to go over a strategy to decide what assets are very strong assets and what assets are very weak assets. So in a typical, typical exam, you may be asked, here are four assets. Uh, arrange them in order of acidity from um, maybe most acidic to least acidic. And the thing is, um, as uh, Megan Trainer says here, it's really all about uh, that base. Meaning that if you're given four acids, like up here, you want to look at actually their conjugate bases, and in particular the stability of that conjugate base. Now for the vast majority of cases, the conjugate base is going to be an anion, and uh, we're going to look at the stability of the anion. Okay. What phrase you want to repeat to yourself over and over again is strong acids, give stable conjugate bases, or we could even put here very stable. Let's give an example. If we have uh, HCl, a hydrochloric acid, and uh, we mix it with water, we get an equilibrium. Okay. And we get a proton transfer. We have, let's say, Cl minus plus H3O plus. Okay. If you know your pKs very well, okay, you can show the pKa's of the two uh, acids. Uh, or if you know that for a fact that this anion is very stable, then you could predict that the equilibrium does favor the products. But let's just go ahead and for now look at the pKa's. Uh, the pKa of the acid on the left is minus 4. And uh, the acid on the right is the hydronium ion, and that is, I'm just looking at my uh, pKa table, um, uh -oh. oh, there it is, uh, pKa equals minus 2. <clears throat> Do you remember that the more acidic a molecule is, the lower the pKa, so HCl is definitely more acidic than H3O+, and the other phrase that you recall is equilibrium favors the weaker acid. And we're going to draw an equilibrium arrow, mainly going to the right. It's a little bit small, but we're favoring the right. Okay, but what does this imply? This implies that this anion right here, since we're favoring the products, we can assume that that is high stability. Right? You're, when you run a reaction, the reaction goes towards typically the more stable side. And we're going to say that that is more stable. And then the other thing is that if that molecule, that anion, is very stable, I'm going to draw the lone pairs, then that ion is less likely to grab a hydrogen and go back to the other side. So more stability, less reactivity. And we could even say now that this is less basic. Less basic than, uh, for instance, water, the other base in this reaction. So how do we figure out stability? I, that's the main goal of this video, give you some tools on how to get stability without knowing the pKa's. Okay? And then if you know the stability, you can start ranking your acids and figuring out which one is more likely to give your conjugate base. There's going to be four trends, and those four trends actually were on the cover sheet here. Um, size, electronegativity, resonance, and hybridization. And 
you don't want to use one trend incorrectly when you should be using the other one of the other three trends and the first trend uh, we're going to look at is electronegativity give me one second I want to do this in a good order <clears throat> yeah let's do trend one trend one will be uh, electronegativity Mm, yes, the four assets that I want to compare <clears throat> are going to be very similar to the cover page actually, but I'm replacing one of the molecules, uh, CH4, NH3, H2O, HF. And these are your assets. Now, yeah, it would be great if you could memorize all the pKa, uh, pKa values, but if you don't, and there's a lot of them, or if there's too many of them, you could figure out, well, what gives me the most stable conjugate base? That came from the strongest acid. So it's a little bit of scratch work, but it's definitely well worth it. You really want to figure out the conjugate basis. You want to analyze the conjugate basis, not directly the acids. So, you're going to remove a hydrogen from each one, and that did not work, um, my bad, CH3, equilibrium, CH3, and this is a minus. Okay. I know I'm not showing you the full reaction, like what is the base that grabs this hydrogen. Uh, theoretically, you're just using the, a, a very, very strong base to affect this change, and then we're going to analyze each of these anions. So remove a hydrogen, specifically a proton, off of each of these uh, central atoms. Okay, and I'm also drawing lone pairs just for practice. Okay, we should know how many lone pairs are in that anion. Uh, HO has an O with three lone pairs, and then HF. stability now of anions. When you notice that the really the difference between each of these conjugate bases is just where the charge is, you can notice that the charge is on different atoms. But even more important is those different atoms uh, within the same period. Let's get the periodic table. C minus, N minus, O minus, F minus. C, O, N, F. Same period, the same row. And this is so important that I'm going to even put it on the, the heading here anion on atoms in, and I'll use the word row here, okay, period or row. Okay. When that is the case, you're going to use electronegativity. How willing is the atom going to accept that negative charge? Okay, because it, it's a stress on the atom to have an excess of charge, but some atoms are more uh, apt for that or better for that than others. The most electronegative atom we know is F minus or F. F is most electronegative and thus it can accommodate the charge the best. So this is the this is the most stable. If that is the most stable then our conclusion is HF is the most acidic. Okay. Only use this rule when you have atoms that have that charge within the same period. Okay. And then the other obvious thing is that, well, you, you don't want to compare apples to oranges. So if you do have a neutral molecule, like this, what if this was H3O+, your conjugate base would be H2O. 
Okay, so H2O, since it's neutral, would have been more stable than any of these anions, but we don't have that case. We go from H2O to HO minus. Uh, so I just want to put that down. What about, and you'll do this at home, what about H3O plus? Is that a very strong acid compared to these? Well, we could always compare it or pick up the conjugate base and compare it with the other conjugate bases. Okay. See, see if you could rationalize actually that this is, mm, let me just double check, this is the most acidic acid when you're comparing it with these four. It's because this is the most stable. It's neutral versus the four anions. Okay. Set that aside. We're only let's focus on these four. What is the least stable? It's this one. Least stable. And therefore this methane is the least acidic. So be very careful when you talk about these trends. It's very easy to get the reverse uh, in your head. All right. Strong acids give stable conjugate bases. So least stable, least acidic. Before we move on to the second trend, if it's least stable, this is actually the most basic. The, yeah, there are two conclusions when you have stability. Least stable, you can assume that that means it came from the least acidic acid. And it, if this is the least stable, it's also the most basic because it's the most reactive. And in contrast, F minus is the least basic. Okay. So not only were we able to rank or get the extremes of the acids, the most acidic and the least acidic, what else do we do? We got the most basic, oops, 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 most basic and the least basic. Run through that exercise yourself just to make sure it's stuck in your head. So start with this and rank the acids and justify your ranking. Okay. Um, the second most acidic is water because this is the second most stable. Okay. Last thing, you can actually look at the pKa's and see if HF has a lower pKa than H2O, which has a lower pKa than NH3, and has a lower pKa than CH4. I think I actually drew these in order. C-N-O-F, C-N-O-F, or you should be looking at the anions. Number two, size. You saw anions where the charges on different atoms within the same period, but what if they're in the same group, same column? So in parentheses again, now anion on atoms in same column. We're not going to use electronegativity. Actually, they have similar electronegativities as you go down the column. They have very different sizes, the anions. And this one's fairly simple. Um, let's do... Ah, yeah, why don't we do this? Uh, HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. Again, these are our acids. It's very tempting, especially if this is a multiple choice question. Like, pick the choice that shows these acids in order of acidity from highest acidity to lowest acidity. It's very tempting for a multiple choice question just to try to think of it in your head. But, Take the time to draw out the conjugate basis. It will definitely help you avoid any errors. Okay. 
in terms of stability, in terms of stability, these are halogens. They're they're all electronegative. Yes, true. F or F is more electronegative than any of these other three halogens, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. But they're all electronegative. Electronegative. We're going to actually base our decision now on size. Size is more important when you compare atoms within the same column. So which has the bigger size? It's this iodine. And then fluorine is tiny compared to iodine. Okay. So with a bigger volume, that charge can be spread out better. So here, charge is better delocalized. And therefore, this is the most stable anion out of the four. Oh, that's interesting. F minus is the least stable. Did you, did you notice F minus is uh, the common anion for the first two trends? But when we look at electronegativity, because all the atoms with the charge are in the same row, F minus is the most stable. But in comparison to these other halides, F minus is actually the least stable. HI is the most acidic. Okay. Again, go ahead and uh, do this from scratch. N realize that these anions are on atoms within the same column. Another word for column is group. Group 1, group 2. Halogens, I think we'll call them group 7. Okay. Let's pick, for you to do at home, let's pick uh, three other acids. Uh, before we do that, this is the least acidic. HF is the least acidic compared to these three. HF is the most acidic compared to these three. Because you never know when you're going to need to use more than one trend. Now, you wouldn't use two trends at the same time, but you can use one trend to compare, you know, molecule A and B, and then use size to compare, or use another trend to compare B and C, to somehow get the order of all the acids that are listed. The one I want you to try at home, and I'm going to hopefully put this out of order, because so far we've listed them in order, actually. Um, for sure, this is out of order. H2S, H2SE, selenium, and H2O. Okay, put those in order. Order from most acidic to least, to least, oops. You could always verify your answer by looking at the pKa's as well. But what what is the goal here? It's to try to order acidity without the need to memorize pKa's. You notice I've I've I haven't listed any pKa's so far uh, for the trends, electronegativity, and in this case uh, size. Three resonance. This is three. This is the third out of four. The two molecules that I want to look at are going to be nitrous acid, nitric acid, and nitrous acid. Okay. Do you remember your gen chem? Nitric acid comes from nitrate, um, HNO3. Nitrous comes from nitrite. So nitrite is NO2 minus, but we to make it an acid, it's HNO2. Okay. Hmm. These are the acids. 
Well, guess what? We have to figure out the conjugate basis. Again, it's a little bit extra work, but it will help you avoid any mistakes. To say acid, I meant conjugate basis. Now this is a little bit tricky because we're going to have to draw the Lewis structures, and it's more complicated than the other ones that we've seen. Uh, when we lose that hydrogen, right? Let me put in equilibrium. When we lose that hydrogen, we have NO3 minus. NO3 minus looks like this. And I'm drawing the lone pairs for a reason. If I'm going too fast, okay, you could obviously pause the video. But remember nitrate? There's that nitrogen has four bonds. <clears throat> nitrogen with four bonds and no lone pairs is positive. You could figure out the formal charge for that. Nitrous acid looks like this. See, there used to be an H right here, but when it gives up its proton, it becomes an anion. And this one actually has only one charge right here. We have to figure out who can stabilize the charge better. We can't use electronegativity because the anion is on oxygen in both cases. We can't use size because, well, O minus is the same size as O minus. We're using resonance. And what we know from here, if you remember your general chemistry, but also where you're going to use a lot of resonance in organic, you have one resonance structure. So it looks a little strange. People normally write resonance uh, from left to right, but I got to go from top to bottom because I don't have space. What we notice here, okay, and you could test yourself by drawing these resonance contributing structures on your own, making sure that you have all the charges and to practice the lone pairs. That's two resonance structures, two contributing resonance structures. We have a third we bring this down. Did I do this right? Oh, no. I don't want to bring that down. Sorry. I want to. I haven't put a double bond on the oxygen on the right yet. So I have this. A little bit fast, a little bit sloppy, but. Okay, There's, there should be no double bond there. That's it for the resonance structures. Okay, When you do this at home, uh, do this more neat than I am. It will definitely help, and you can refer to your notes when you study. For nitrous acid, we only have two resonance structures. We could share the charge between the two oxygens. This anion can stabilize a charge and spread it out in three resonance structures versus two for nitrite. This is nitrite. The more resonance structures you have, typically, the more stable the anion. So I would say that uh, this is more stable. So I mean, I'll circle all of them. That's the more stable anion versus uh, the nitrite. If we look up, oh, before that, what does that make nitric acid? It, nitric acid is the more acidic. If we look up nitric acid, I'll do this for us, versus HNO2, which is nitrous acid, the pKa. I looked this up beforehand. It's minus 1.4 for nitric acid versus 3.8. Nitric acid is the more acidic acid. Okay. One last trend before I run out of time is uh, probably one of the lesser known trends and it has to deal with hybridization. Okay. So 
Uh, we use this if you can't compare the size, you can't compare electronegativity, and none of the anions have resonance. And this one is fairly simple. I'll put it out of order. Alkane, alkyne, and then I'll put the alkene last. Yeah, a little out of order. When we look at the conjugate base, you could draw the lines or the Lewis structure, Lewis slash with condensed, but we have this. We lose one of the H's, it doesn't matter which carbon, and we have an anion, C minus. Here we're going to lose, let's lose the hydrogen on the right. I really should be saying proton on the right. And then this one here. I believe I have all the proper conjugate bases. They're all C's, so we can't use electronegativity or size because they're all identical. And there's no resonance actually for any of these molecules. We're going to look at the lone pair. The stability of the lone pair. Lone pair stability. The more S character, the closer lone pair is to nucleus, more stable. I know I went through that kind of fast, and also I don't know if this is even a sentence. When considering the lone pair stability, the more S character the atom has, the closer the lone pair is to the nucleus, it's held closer to the vest, the more stable. I told you that I wrote these out of order. Okay. SP3, SP, SP2. Those are the hybridizations of those three anions. Character. Since we're mixing S plus P plus P plus P, three, sorry, four atomic orbitals, but only one of them is an S, 25%. For this one, obviously it's 50-50. 50% S character. For this one, we have one S and we have one P plus another P. So 33%. The lone pair is in an SP orbital. The lone pair is here in an SP3. The lone pair for an SP orbital has 50% S character. It's held closer to the vest. That will add more stability. My conclusion is this is the most stable anion. Okay? And this is the most acidic. Most acidic up here. What can we say? We could say if you if your molecules have a acidic hydrogen, alkynes more acidic than alkenes, than alkanes. And if you look at the pKa, the pKa is going to be a range depending on the exact uh, structure of your alkyne, alkene, alkanes. Um, but in general, alkynes are going to be 25, alkenes may be 40, and alkanes um, 50 uh, to 60. Alkanes are not very acidic. Think about our discussion throughout the whole unit. If your alkane is not very acidic, then its conjugate base is very basic. Remember how we said that this anion was the most unstable? If it's the most unstable, it is the most basic. Versus, And definitely it's more basic than uh, this anion here. All right, so don't get confused. The, the pK is not for this molecule. The pK is for this molecule, the acid, and for this one. Maybe I should put methane, CH4. Oh, I could do this. CH2, uh, CH3. Okay. A little bit sloppy, but 
I think I got through all the main points.